good news is that that's over. It's been tough. Last uh, six months have been the toughest for me and like and for everyone involved. I am an eternal optimist. Positive is that we have learned a lot. Yes. Uh, it's, it's also life as a public company won't be this difficult. Baiju Ravindran, the founder and CEO of India's highest valued startup, Baiju's, will be relieved that the past six months are behind him and his company. In an interview he gave to Business Standard after revealing his company's FY21 financials, Ravindran said that now the company was prepared. Asserting that this kind of thing happens only once, he said the edtech giant was strengthening the finance function and would hire a global CFO soon. Ravindran also said the company is now prepared not only for the next year but also to live the life of a public company whenever it decides to cross that bridge. However, the FY21 financials don't paint a pretty picture. The company's operational revenue on a consolidated basis grew just 4% year on year to 2280 crore rupees and the losses jumped 20 times to 4,589 crore rupees. Baiju's FY20 loss was adjusted to 232 crore rupees. But why have the company's revenues remained flat despite Ravindran claiming significant business growth during the fiscal? This was due to a new revenue recognition practice adopted in FY21. This change was sought by its audit firm Deloitte Haskins & Sells. Baiju's started recognizing streaming revenue over the period of consumption which was previously recognized fully on the commencement of the contract. Credit and EMI sales will also get recognized after complete collection. This meant that revenue from sales made under deferred payment terms totaling 1,156 crore rupees was not recognized because according to the auditor, Baiju's did not meet the criteria that it was probable it will collect the consideration to which it is entitled. Deloitte further highlighted difficulties in the auditing process. Under normal circumstances, the fee paid to Deloitte for statutory audit would have grown from 73 lakh rupees in FY20 to 1 crore rupees. However, Deloitte said it charged 3.5 crore rupees extra as statutory audit fee because of the additional effort incurred in the audit consequent to material weaknesses observed in internal controls. Owing to the pandemic, the auditor said Baiju's faced hardships not only in terms of business operations but also in implementation and operating effectiveness of certain internal controls over financial reporting. As Baiju's diverted its effort towards integrating and streamlining the operations of the various entities it acquired post the end of the financial year, it resulted in delays in the preparation of the financial statements for FY21. As a consequence, Baiju's could not comply with certain provisions of the Companies Act. Ultimately though, it received a clean audit report from Deloitte, notwithstanding the complexities involved in reworking the numbers based on the new revenue recognition model. It's interesting to note that the share of India in Baiju's total revenue went down from 73% to 43%. Meanwhile, Middle East's share jumped from 11% to 22% and the US's share increased from 16% to 35%. White Hat Jr., which the startup acquired in August 2020, has played spoil sport in Baiju's financials. Ravindran said that bringing down high customer acquisition costs at White Hat Jr. is the only business challenge he has. From the date of acquisition, White Hat Jr. has contributed just 326.66 crore rupees to the total revenue of Baiju's but 1,548 crore rupees to the loss before tax from operations. The company I use uh, seems to have grown at mega speed and in the process uh, made a string of acquisitions and obviously uh, not embedded all the processes. So speed by itself is dangerous. So from that perspective, it looks like Baidu's could have bitten off more than it can chew because the amount of losses, the sales practices, or the stories you hear of Baidu's doesn't paint a good picture. So, so at the end of the day, is this a, even a simple thing? Like why does it take a company 18 months to publish its financial results when companies of that size and scale, which are listed or unlisted, are publishing their financials within a month of the year closing, right? Uh, why does it take 18 months for such? So that points to something which is lacuna. 
in its processes, in its system, in its resource management. The anecdotal evidence which is there in front of us from whatever observations that you and I can make, third party outsiders, is, points that the worst is definitely not behind it. So at the end of the day, the funding environment itself has become more difficult. And by those, uh, the fact that its reputation itself is not now uh, uh, so good, uh, we'll find it really, really tough to raise any sort of funding, so to say. The string of bad news that has followed Baiju's has also had an impact on the brand. The word of mouth is at least four times more powerful than TV advertising. And when it comes to negative word of mouth, that's five times even more powerful than positive word of mouth. Now, as far as Baiju is concerned, if you look at the reviews, the customers are not happy. And when these negative detractors start spreading negative word of mouth, it's literally like, you know, a series of, you know, hundreds of thousands of white ants damaging the brand. You get a sense that especially frontline staff are under a lot of pressure and they're forced to make aggressive sales and kind of, you know, embrace aggressive sales tactics. And very few human beings are used to that kind of pressure and that kind of tactics for a long period of time. Is the worst past them? I don't think so, unless they make some fundamental changes. And those fundamental changes would be to kind of not just be customer focused, but to be customer obsessed. That means really understand what customers like about them and what customers don't like about them and adjust things you know, at the front lines, specifically around sales tactics, which appear to be really, really aggressive. And then the second part of the equation is how do you actually build a brand that is not just okay, but you know something that's worthy of recommendation? And the best way to do it is to engage your staff in the process because your frontline staff in particular know exactly what customers want, don't want. They know exactly what processes are working, not working. Citing unaudited data, Baidu said its sales for FY22 grew more than fourfold to almost 10,000 crore rupees. In the ongoing fiscal, it said revenue is expected to increase more than 50% after clocking an income of 4,500 crore rupees in the first four months. But the reputational damage has already been done. If Baiju's is not able to bring in the right internal processes and remedy the mounting criticism from customers, the worst is definitely not behind it. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.